Marquez Vingerard and InYourHeadOnline.com has eight. All right, we are back. Welcome back to In Your Head Wrestling Radio. We didn't do our intros before, so yeah. let's do them now. I'm the Internet icon, handsome Jackie Jones, along with my right-hand man. One-inch biceps, the power goat. Bah. How about that? Man, that was some extra power in that one. And the man all the way from the U.K., the voice of the beautiful people and the cult of personality Romeo's choice, the Lionheart, Barbie Richards, Potato Man. Oh, man. And joining us right now is none other than Colin Delaney. Welcome to In Your Head. What's going on, guys? I'm doing pretty good. We didn't give you any. We should, we should have came up with a funky nickname for Colin. Yeah. I like I the extremely cute wrestler. I'm sure I got plenty of them. Yeah, extremely cute wrestler. No, that's an yeah. actual nickname. That's not just uh, Barbie's opinion. Right, no, 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 that's, that's my nickname, that's what they call me, on the streets, hmm. you know, I got street cred. Definitely, I, I can see that. They're like, yo, here comes extremely cute. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's trembling in terror. Yeah, it's kind of like Biggie. Right, e. everyone. Yeah. Was that, was that interesting? Like a, like the Biggie name, it's kind of like that. It's uh, hmm. extremely just cute. just like Biggie. Beforehand, we were just talking like about Biggie. some important stuff, but now we're going to get to even more important stuff. This is There's King nothing of more important than a KFC double down. It, it is. We don't like to give away the magic here in the show because we talk about important stuff off the air, like D Wade DDP <laughs> on, and he was telling inch uh, one inch biceps that that's better than a one inch uh, penis. Mm-hmm. And uh, we're talking to Colin Delaney, and he's telling us about the the KSC double down. Yeah. Uh, thumbs up, thumbs down. I enjoyed it. Uh, thought it, it, it. It looked small, surprisingly filling. I say surprisingly filling, but it shouldn't be surprising that thing's filling. It's just meat. Mm. I think people so said that to Intra before, too. <laughs> that I'm just meat. Yeah. <laughs> Small, no, but surprisingly <laughs> filling. Oh, oh okay. Well, my goodness. <laughs> Things got oh. weird fast. <laughs> <laughs> you can say that. This is a typical <laughs> night here on In Your Head. But, uh... King of Trios tournament this weekend, April 23rd, the 24th, and the 25th at the ECW Arena in Philadelphia, right. Pennsylvania. Have you, uh, have you been in the ECW Arena before? Have you uh, competed in it? Oh, I've competed in it plenty of times, plenty of times. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's cool to wrestle there. Like, the first time I wrestled there, I was just, like, out of my head in, like, awe of just thinking about everything that's gone down there, you know? All the, all the classic matches that have happened there, and like everybody who's wrestled there. And like, it's really like a, they've done a lot with it. When I first wrestled there, the first time I wrestled there, it was pretty run down and pretty, uh, pretty shady. But now like, the people have taken over, and it is really, really nice in there. Mm-hmm. Which was your first match there? My first match there was, I want to say it was King of Trios Weekend 07. Uh, it was night three, uh, and we wrestled like a tag gauntlet, uh, me and Jimmy, and we uh, beat 2.0 and then lost to Larry Sweeney and the sharecropper of Sweet and Sour International. Oh, a throwback. And I don't recall any of that being, like, that was my first experience there, and I don't recall it being good at all. And I think my second and third experiences in the arena were also bad. And I just had, like, such a, like, like man, this is like a one of the most famous wrestling arenas in the world, and I could not have a good match here to save my life. (laughs) Does it have a special feel when you're actually in the ring? Uh, It's Yeah, I mean, it's especially like, uh, I'm sure a lot of people out there watch Shakara, and the the other arenas they have, like the, uh, you know, the Reading Coliseum and the Barnesville Thunderdome. They don't do Barnesville Thunderdome anymore, (laughs) thank goodness. But uh, they're like smaller, like uh, Knights of Columbus type halls and stuff like that, where the ECW arena is just like, such a massive, massive place, and the lighting is cool, and like just the whole setup is is really, really neat and really just perfect for a wrestling show. Mm-hmm. Uh, since you uh, you were part of the the WWE's version ECW, uh, when you're in the ECW arena, do you ever like bring that up, or does anyone give you a hard time about that? Uh, not really, because I mean I don't know. Like I guess it is the ECW arena, but it's more just the arena because every like every promotion and their brother tries to run there. Like it's like the place. There's wrestling there all the time. So I think the uh, the ECW part of the arena has kind of uh, I don't know. I'm not gonna say it's gone, but it's not as not as talked about as it once was. Mm-hmm. 
Now, uh, do you know uh, what team you'll be facing in the first round of uh, the King of Trios? I do, I do. It's, uh, it'll be me, Vin Gerard, and Stigma, the unstable, of course. Uh, not to toot our own horn, but last year we made it to the, uh, we made it all the way to night three, uh, being eliminated by Claudio, uh, Danielson, and Dave Taylor. Nothing to, uh, you know, I mean, got eliminated by three of the best wrestlers in the world. Can't really say much about that. Right. But uh, this year we will be taking on Team Osaka Pro in round one. Uh, honestly, to miss, not going to lie, never seen any of these three guys wrestle. I uh, have no background on them. So, <laughs> like, I, I watched, a, when I found out who I was wrestling, I watched a brief YouTube clip, and that's legitimate. That is the extent of what I know about these three guys. Uh, I'm going into a match with uh, people you never wrestled before. Is that uh, is that something you get a? Uh, is it something that makes you nervous? Something you look forward to? Like, uh, what are your thoughts about that? Ah, uh, man, I don't know. I mean, I, I guess I back before WWE, before I uh, I did what I've done, I would have been a little more nervous about it. But nowadays, uh, I don't know. I say. It's weird. I, I wrestled uh, a lot of different people, mm-hmm. and uh, it doesn't. No one really makes me nervous anymore. I'm sure, like, I would find people who I would be nervous getting in the ring with, or, or you know, having a chance to wrestle. But I don't know. These uh, these three don't really make me that nervous. The language barrier might be uh, might make me a little nervous, but. <laughs> but your you time know. in WWE, would you feel that that made you a better uh, performer? Of course. It's uh, I mean, it's. It's the show. It's if if you've gotten to wrestling and like I hate when people are like I I never want to go to WWE. Why? Why are you doing this then? Why would you get into professional wrestling with no intent to be? That's like saying I I got I work at this job to be in middle management my whole life. No, you didn't. You like clearly you want to be the best at what you do, and being the best at what you do means you're in WWE. Mm-hmm. No, yeah, you mentioned the the team name is a uh, team unstable. And there's a yep. lot of other uh, teams on here. And I saw that Curry Man is actually going to be a uh, in one of the teams, uh, Team Delici- Delicioso. Do you think he's going to have Yeah, last second us? replacement. Uh, we haven't seen Curry Man uh, in a time. No, I haven't seen Curry Man in a, a good minute. And uh, I was surprised when I saw him as a replacement. I, uh, excited to see it. That team uh, team looks like something to watch. But definitely was surprised to see him in there. Besides yourself, of course, what, what team would you uh, do you think people should look out for? Ah, uh, man, Team Fist won last year. Uh, team Fist of uh, Icarus, Grant Akuma, and Chuck Taylor. They uh, they took it last year. Uh, the three of them uh, pretty much just I don't know, uh, lately have flown kind of under the radar, but pretty much dominated Chikara for for years and years. And even uh, even if they had them flying under the radar like they have been. They're still always the team you got to watch out for because they're three of the most vicious wrestlers around. And I mean, uh, the BBK, of course, there's uh, they're represented under two teams, and they've been just eating Chikara up lately, like everyone in their paths. Uh, Claudio and Aries just are running through people like they're nothing. So uh, they're also uh, another one to look out for. I mean, every team, like, there's such a vast array of teams. I mean, there's, what, uh, two teams from Japan, two teams from Mexico, teams from all across the United States. Like, it's such a, it, it really is the biggest tournament in professional wrestling. Like, in so many more ways than one, there's just teams from everywhere. There's wrestlers from everywhere, of every style. So it's really going to be an interesting mix and an interesting tournament. Mm-hmm. And I don't think you mentioned before, but you get your tickets and all your information about uh, everybody that's involved, and it's only $20 a ticket. And that's uh, uh, ChikaraPro.com, and then the slash King of Trios 2010. But just go to ChikaraPro.com, and you'll find all the information right there. Uh, Barbie, and I'm telling you, if you're if you're a pro wrestling fan, though, this this is where you should spend your money. Like, if you can possibly make it down to the arena on uh, this weekend, any of the nights, really. I mean, they're all going to be amazing. So if you can, if if you're a wrestling fan, this. This is easily the best money you can spend on wrestling. Now, someone out there who uh, isn't familiar with Chikara doesn't know a lot about it. 
what would you exp- how would you like explain it? What it's, they would- uh, I mean, it's uh, it's really different from a lot of different wrestling companies and wrestling promotions uh, in ways like uh, it's it's very family oriented. So I mean, you can bring your kids or whatever. You don't have to worry about uh, like since the Attitude Era of wrestling. Mm-hmm. A lot of different things have flown in wrestling. A lot of different things have been able to go on, like with the cursing and stuff, and it not being family friendly like it was back in the day. But Chikara is very family friendly, family oriented. There's fun characters. There's, I mean, there's a team of, of, of the colony, a team of ants. Uh, Curry Man is teaming with uh, Los Ice Creams. They're both made of ice cream. So, like, there's, there's fun things, uh, but there's also a roster of probably some of the best wrestlers in the world. So you're not just getting, like, goofy, fun characters. You're also getting some of the best wrestling, like, outside, you know, WWE and a handful of other places, like, the best pure wrestling that you will get anywhere. Mm-hmm. Uh, Barbie, did you have a question? Yeah, I asked Vin Gerard this in the lead-up to King of Trios last year. I'd like to get your perspective on it. It's uh, sure. there's a competition. Basically, the idea is the winner is the person who creeps the most people out. It's between Vinger and not Vinger, uh, Stigma and Gran Akuma. Who wins there? Uh, who? It's got to be Akuma. I think it's got to be Akuma. I can uh, see that. He's got that kind of, like, sexual predator stare in his eyes sometimes. I was just going to say that. He, mm-hmm. uh, he has this look in his eyes pretty much at all times. And you're not sure, like... If it's like a serial killer look or like uh, I'm going to rape you look or like you don't know what it is, but it is honest to goodness frightening. And then when you get in the ring with him, he will hit you harder than anybody has ever hit anybody in their lives. So he's he's frightening and with good reason. I mean, Stigma is creepy all on his own, and uh, that's why he's on my side, and I'm glad he's on my side. Mm-hmm. But uh, Stigma... Sigma definitely looks the part and has enough to uh, to back it up, which is a thing both of them possess very well. Uh, Inchman, do you have a question from the board? Yeah, I have some questions from the message board. Uh, the Bob Collings, he wants to know, how does he like working for 2CW? Uh, outside Chicago, mm-hmm. I'd say it's my uh, my favorite place to be on the in independent wrestling. There's uh, there's another one where they have a lot of different styles and a lot of uh, I feel it's run really uh, really well and really solidly. Uh, they give the fan they're they're really focused on making the fans happy as opposed to uh, guys you know doing out there kind of for themselves and wanting to uh, make themselves look better. They're they're focused on the fans and making the two CW products better, which is really great. We have everyone working for a common goal as opposed to uh, working for themselves. Um, something I always liked is the uh, the DVD covers of all the Chikara DVDs. Do you have yeah. any particular favorite ones? You know what? I don't. And you know why? Because I uh, I think I've made maybe one of them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the entire time I've been there, I've been on one DVD cover. That's crazy, I think. Yeah. I'm a little lurked by it. And I, like, legitimately, I've, I've, I've brought this up before. I'm like, what does a guy got to do to get a cool comic book-like cover? Because I think the one I'm on is just, like, a like a slight picture of me, like, in the background. I'm not even featured on any of these things. You know what? When I win King of Trios this year, they're going to have no choice but to put me prominently featured on the front of a DVD cover. <laughs> so not only am I playing for, for these... Uh, for the, the king of trios, but I am I am fighting for myself on the cover of one of these DVDs. I'm putting it out there right now. For only like wrong it down. So the covers are usually uh, reappropriated comic book covers. Is you know is there one superhero you think you'd do a decent job of standing in for? Uh, let me think about it. Let me think about it. Um, 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 um. man, I don't know. Uh, personally, I, and. Being that I am a little bit of a comic book nerd, a little bit. I'm not going to say I'm a, I'm a huge comic book nerd. I was a big Gambit fan. Mm-hmm. Make a sweet Gambit. I don't have much of a, a Nall and Zach I should I should work on that. Like I work on, I'm, I'm going to work on my British one. The next time I come on, we can just go British, real British accent for fake British accent. But until then, I'm going to work on my Cajun accent. 
Can you throw for, cards? Uh, for my gambit love. I know. Um, I mean, I can work on that too. Mm-hmm. Uh, Plus, he, he does have, he does have an impeccable skill with the ladies. Mm. Uh-huh. So, so I like that about him too. Yeah, maybe he could be throwing the uh, double down, the uh, KFC double down. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> That'd be pretty sweet. Uh, we got a couple callers here. We got uh, Joel calling in from Portugal. Hello. Hello there. Portugal. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Can you hear me, guys? Yeah, we can yep. hear you. Yes. Fine. Yes. Oh, okay. Uh, I just have one question uh, to you uh, to ask you. Um, you. As you were talking, you work uh, for Shikara, and you've been working for a couple of months. Uh, my question is, uh, being that you have worked in the WWE and you know how the WWE works in, uh, from the in- inside, uh, is there anybody in Shikara uh, right now on the roster that you think would work quite well in the WWE? Um, huh. Yeah, I mean... I really think there's a lot of guys there who have a, a lot of uh, a lot of talent, a lot of underappreciated talent. Like Claudio Castagnoli is easily probably the best wrestler, one of the best wrestlers in the world. And uh, you know that's just that's a fact. That's that's a true fact. But I mean, there's other guys that are just uh, I I'd say really uh, really underrated. Like uh, let me think, man. The roster's so vast. Like. Uh, I love watching. Uh, I love watching anytime Fire Ant is in the ring. I like mm-hmm. anytime Chuck Taylor yeah. is in the ring. Like guys yeah. like that, I think are uh, have so much, so much skill, but don't get the uh, the praise that they, they possibly deserve. And there's guys who can like cut promos better than uh, possibly anyone in WWE. Like like Eddie Kingston, I can listen mm-hmm. to him talk all day long. And for that reason alone, outside the fact that he's an amazing wrestler, it makes him uh, valuable for a, a place like WWE or, or anywhere, really. Mm-hmm. Okay. Thanks for calling in, Joel. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, man. Have fun in Portugal. Yeah, I think I pronounced his name wrong, but it's close enough. Uh, <laughs> whatever. Else? Yeah, whatever. He's just a Portuguese guy. So. Uh, we got Gene calling in. Hey. Are you also from Portugal? Yeah, uh, I, uh, I'm from South Portugal. <laughs> oh, wow. A lot of English in South Portugal. <laughs> the accents yeah. are amazingly different. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the yeah. dialect. I, I'm picking it up a little bit as you guys call in. Hey, yo, 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 yo. Anyway, uh, what I wanted to say is uh, the angle that they had uh, when they used you in the WWE, when they had all the big guys come out and just squash you week after week after week, um, what did you think of that angle, and, and did you did you think you have a you had a promising future with the company when they uh, try, at least try to push you out there with that kind of angle? Um, I, I mean, I always liked it. Like, depending on how you look at it, some people thought it was terrible. They're like, I, I can't believe they would do that to you. I thought it was great. Like, <laughs> I can't think of anything bad about it, really. Uh, because my, I'm sorry to cut you off. My two, my two favorites were Big Daddy V and uh, I forget his name, uh, Sisky. Those are my two favorites because those guys freaking annihilated you, and I, I thought it was so entertaining. I, uh, my buddy here, uh, he still to this day watches me wrestle the Big Show on YouTube, <laughs> and uh, nearly pees his pants every time. <laughs> Every time. My buddy Mike Cervone here in Rochester, New York. Every time, nearly pees his pants. <laughs> uh, what was it like uh, working with Tommy Dreamer? Tommy was great. and uh, I mean, when we were together, a lot of help. Always a lot of help. Uh, and when we were apart, uh, probably just beat me worse than guys seven foot. Like, just... <laughs> like, I was a lot of big guys. Tommy Dreamer. Whew. Bad guy to get on his bad side. Really? I wouldn't expect that. But on a, when he got on his good side, I mean, he was really, he was always so helpful, like in and out of the ring. And, uh, but yeah, whew, cross that guy and you are in trouble. Uh, thanks for calling, Gene. Uh, Barb? Uh, King of Trios Night One from last year, you got in the ring with Al Snow, Dilo Brown, and Glacier. It looked like they just kind of destroyed you guys for a while. What was that like? Ah, uh, 
<laughs> what was that like? Uh, if you can remind me of what it's if, if somebody can tell me what it was like, I, I'd appreciate it. Because, man, I have, oh, that's another time I haven't been beat up so bad in a while. I would, like, we legitimately, we got out of there with the win, but we limped into night two. Those, those three guys, uh, D'Lo Brown's clearly spent some time in Japan recently because he was just, he was throwing them out there. And, uh, Al Snow was doing a history of tossing, tossing us around too. We, we really had, uh, no answer for them but a pin. <laughs> that was about it. <laughs> that was all we had in our repertoire. And thank goodness it worked because if it didn't, <laughs> like, <laughs> We would have just taken more beating. I don't think, like, I don't even think they wanted to pin us. I don't even think beating, like, pinning us was in their minds. I think just inflicting pain on us was on the docket for, for them. Hmm. Fist versus the Deathmatch Kings, that was kind of out there. That was nuts. But that, the match with you guys, it just, that was brutal to watch at times. Yeah, I, uh, brutal to watch and brutal to be a part of. <laughs> Uh, Intro, do you have a question from the board? Yeah, Bob Collings, he has another question. He wants to know what it's like to work with Raven. Oh, I uh, I worked with Raven for the first time a couple weeks ago, actually, in 2CW. Uh, and it's interesting because, you know, me and uh, me and him have some things in common. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, we both, uh, both had our problems with Tommy Dreamer, both most notably for our problems with Tommy Dreamer. So I thought we'd get along nicely, and uh, I haven't gone out there and told him that, but he didn't feel the same, and then uh, proceeded to DDT me four different times. If he had a point to prove. Hmm. But ha- have you uh, suffered any uh, serious injuries in the ring? Uh, not really. I mean, I've been generally fortunate. I mean, I, I took some, some serious beatings, but never uh, nothing, uh, nothing broken. Nothing torn, so I mean that's uh, that's all you can ask for. I mean I've been bruised and and beaten pretty good. One time, uh, first time I wrestled Mike Knox, we were in London, England, and I took his uh, whatever the move is there, the whip it. Is that what he calls it? <laughs> Someone help me. I don't know. It's it's Barb, you know, you know what I'm talking about. His his uh, finisher yeah. moves. Yeah, the, the uh, spinning downward spirally thing. Uh, yeah, I, the uh, Alan Shell used to do it too. Yeah. I like the whip right. better. Uh, well, yeah, that's, that's called the, the whip better. Yeah. yeah, spirally thing sounds kind of fruity. But anyways, <laughs> uh, we're in London, England, and legitimately, he gave me that move, and I, uh, you can, you can see it when I hit. If you watch it back, uh, I couldn't really move. And you can see legitimate concern on the ref's face as I just hit the mat and uh, my body kind of remains in an awkward position even when he's pinning me. Mm-hmm. So uh, that one, uh, that was pretty scary and not very uh, not very fun. But, I mean, nothing really. I mean, Greg Kelly knocked me unconscious, if that counts. Yeah, was... He gave me that big chop to the top of the head and I saw blackness and stars. Damn. And uh, <laughs> next thing I remember, next thing I know, I'm eight feet in the air. You personally, do you think you have better matches, or do you enjoy wrestling like uh, the big guys, where you play the small guy in the match, or guys more your size? Uh, I mean, uh, clearly I'm the smaller guy in most situations, so that's what I'm more well versed in. But I wish when I was in WWE, I got a chance to show a little bit of something against some smaller guys, like against. Uh, like an Evan Bourne or a Brian Kendrick or a Paul London or like a Jimmy Wang Yang. Like, I think I think I could have done some fun things, but uh, it was not in the cards for me while I was there. Yeah. Um, we got another call here. We got uh, Brian on the line. Uh, hello. Uh, Colin, do any AI question? ECW. Sure, Brian, shoot. Um, ECW. How, it says on Wikipedia um, that you worked with Shelton Benjamin. Was that your first? Yeah. How was it how was it working with him in a match? Uh Shelton was uh that was my that was my first match in ECW, first match in WWE. Uh I just kinda showed up there out of nowhere, uh, in like a pair of work boots, some jeans and a hockey jersey. And uh yeah, I got kinda thrust onto T V against Shelton Benjamin, who was just 
he's not the biggest guy in WWE. And I guess you probably like people probably don't realize how big he is until he stands next to me. He's huge, and he's a cool. And he just tossed me around that ring like I was like I was a small child. Like you expect it from guys like Big Show and stuff. But man, exactly. Shelton is just such an athlete, and he was just throwing me around the ring. Whoa! Thanks for calling, wow. Brian. Oh, you're welcome. Um, thank you, thank you, Colin. Yeah, thanks, man. Thanks for calling. Yeah. Uh, let's get a uh, POD is calling in from Ireland. Oh man, people are calling from everywhere. Yeah. POD, do you have a question? Yeah. Uh, which wrestler has helped you the most in your wrestling career? What's that? Which wrestler has helped you the most in your wrestling career? Uh, which wrestler has helped you the most in your yeah. wrestling The heavy accent there. Help me the most or hurt me? We'll go with both. All right. I'll feel both sides of that. Yeah. <laughs> it probably is. It's probably all Tommy. Uh, <laughs> I mean, when I was in WWE, uh, Tommy helped me, like, with everything. Like, that's not, like, how to act in the locker room, who to talk to, who not to talk to, like, where to stand, where not to stand. So he was, like, incredibly helpful with everything. And uh, getting in the ring with him for the first time on the other side – was just an experience and a half where he <laughs> he is no joke. He uh like I just said, I mean Great Kali knocked me out and uh Mike Knox I guess nearly paralyzed me. I don't know. <laughs> I just couldn't move. But Tommy gave me uh, a straight up beating. That's your question, POD uh, uh, what's Stevie Richards like as a person? Stevie Richards. Oh, Stevie Richards is actually a, a good friend of mine. Uh, Stevie Richards, uh, just an all-around nice and cool guy, and just the mecca of technology. If you ever had a technology question or wondered something about technology, he is the man to ask. Got that PO? Um, do they have technology in Ireland? <laughs> Come on, man! Go on, Irish. <laughs> You know you can light a bulb using a potato jack. Oh, okay. I'm just, I'm just fooling with you, P.O.D. You're a good man. Thanks for calling in. All right. Thanks very much. Yeah. Yeah. I think now, we... in, discussion, in discussion with the Chikara fans off the In Your Head message board, I've actually brought up the idea of bringing Dr. Stevie into the unstable. Would that be something you'd be interested in? Yeah, sure, man. I think you'd fit right in. Uh, Stevie is, uh, like, he's been doing this forever. Like, a lot of people might not realize, but Steve's been doing this probably longer longer than I've been alive and uh, has had so many, like, the trials and tribulations that guy has gone through, like, with all his neck surgeries and, like, uh, most men wouldn't come back from half of what he has gone through to get where he is. And he's uh, an amazing guy to work with and uh, an amazing guy to know, really. Well, Colin, we really appreciate you coming on tonight, and we hate to cut him short, cause, uh, but we have to call Jake the Snake here. But uh, we'd love to have you back sometime. Yeah, yeah, anytime. And, like, being cut short for Jake the Snake Roberts is, uh, I mean, I'm cool with it. All right. That's <laughs> let everybody get to know, uh, this weekend, April 23rd, the 24th and the 25th, all three nights, Chikara King of Trios at the at the arena in Philly, Pennsylvania. It's only 20 bucks a ticket. Go up there, have a good time. Like you said, it's a lot of fun to see all the masks and all the, all the cool characters, but you also get to see a lot of good wrestling. Yeah, and probably the, I mean, probably the best $20 you'll spend on a, on a wrestling show, and I, I guarantee it. If you don't, uh, I mean, we're not going to make any kind of weird offers or anything, but, uh, <laughs> I mean, come on down, watch me, Vince Gerard and Stigma, The Unstable, take home the King of Trios 2010 and prove that we are the King of Trios in Chicago. This is sweet and sour Larry Sweeney, 19-time ICW, ICWA, Texarkana television champion, and you're listening to InYourHeadOnline.com.